Welcome to a very large edition of On the Line today. I'm joined by a top tackle in the NFL. He's a member of the Baltimore Ravens. It's Ronnie Stanley. Ronnie, how we doing, my man? Doing well. Thanks for having me. Dude, love having you. So I know growing up, I was a big boy growing up. Not as big as you, but I was a big boy, and I always hated to play the line. I always thought I'd get the ball one day. When did you kind of give up on that? You know, I was I was kind of like you, you know what I mean? I just I was I was a play I wanted to be a playmaker. I wanted the ball uh I kind of got forced into the position honestly. Uh <laughs> you know, coach came up to me one day and was like, "Ronnie, there's no one, you know, that big that can really move like you. So this is the only one you're the only one that can play left tackle or tackle in this offense." And, you know, he was right. The other the other kids could play, you know, DN, you know, it wasn't as as hard for them to do that. So so I kind of I kind of just, you know, went went for it, tried to help my team win, and, you know, the rest is history. <laughs> what what age? Was it, like, in high school, or was it, like, in middle school? Did we, were they, like, dude, you got to – we need you Yeah, that was that was uh, mainly in high school. High yeah, school? I was, I was, yeah, I was really uh, trying to play defense at end and tight end before that. Yeah, I feel like that's for all of us big boys. It was either it was those two or fullback. Those are the three we all try to go for because like we're bigger. We can try to be. I don't know. That was always my three. I was I was gunning for, but never really worked right. out for me. It also, it gets cooler to be a hog especially, as you get especially older. Especially if you feel like you're athletic, you know. Yeah. What I mean? Which I did feel like I was enough to do. And I, you well, know, well, I mean, you're in I the NFL, feel like so you're probably you're probably the one of the if not the most athletic guy in the team. So there, there is a point there. Yeah, I try. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and then you also play basketball too. So, I mean, like you're probably the most athletic guy out there, but being a D one lineman, you're a massive guy in high school. Obviously you were pretty big. Uh, but when you were like in peewee or anything before that, did they ever like stop a game? Cause they didn't believe you were actually that age. Cause you were too big. Yeah. That's happened a lot of times actually. And even with basketball as well. There really? Are, there's times. Yeah. Where my mom's literally had to bring my birth certificate to the games <laughs> because parents would question my age. You know, and then it comes to a point where, um, you know, you've played the same kids so long enough, they know you're actually that age. So, yeah. you know, after I was, after, you know, before middle school and, you know, grade school and all that, uh, parents, you know, they knew. <laughs> they finally realized, yeah, that's just yeah. Ronnie. He's just yeah, massive. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So did, did they ever actually, did they ever like stop a game because your mom couldn't get the papers then? Because it sounds no, like it they never, such a problem. No, the, the burden in was never like on us to have papers on on us at times you know there's just people that would literally have conversations with the ref and you know there'd be some stoppage but no one's getting kicked out okay okay i just wanted to make sure i feel like it sounded it sounded like based on what you're saying is if someone actually stopped the game and they didn't mm-hmm. believe you and your mom had to drive back to your house real quick pick up the paper on work and come back no no i never got that serious but I, I think there was one time my mom actually had the paperwork on her like ready That's because crazy. it was happening so many so many weekends in a row it happened that's nuts. So when did college coaches start reaching out? Uh, I think my sophomore year in high school. Um, that was when I received my first offer. And, you know, I, I really wasn't expecting it, honestly. I was not even expecting to be uh, recruited or anything like that. Really? I even mean, with, not with your size early. and everything? I wasn't ex- – I mean, I had no idea. I wasn't really expecting it. I wasn't really – I did. I wasn't the kid that like went to camps. I didn't like go to camps looking for you know offers, interests, or anything. I was just kind of out there playing. Yeah. You know, just for competition and just you know, try, I just love playing sports with my boys. So when did you? Uh, so then, how did Notre Dame get involved? Because I feel like going to those camps is kind of important to get a school like Notre Dame. Yeah, I mean, I didn't go any camps for them. They they kind of you know found me, um, and I you know took my visit. Um, my mom was with me, and you know we both really liked it and. Yeah, it was a very special place. I say I'm from Indiana, so I've been up there. It's it's beautiful. But I went to yeah. IU. I chose a different school. But eh, either yeah, here or there, it's fun there. Little oh. five. <laughs> a lot of fun. Did you ever visit? No, uh, luckily. I mean, unluckily, I never went. Oh, okay. I've always wanted to. I know my boys always went. There was always some crazy a little, stories. A little too, little too late now to do it. But uh, right, right, right. <laughs> definitely not going back for it. No, not worth going back at this point. And then, so like I know at Notre Dame, why is it such a line factory? I swear it every year there's a guy being drafted in the top top uh, first round. You know, when I was there, we really had like some real dogs and we had in my opinion one of the best offensive line coaches ever. He doesn't coach there anymore, but you know, I think from the guys there 
when I was first going there, the senior left tackle was Zach Martin, and I was his backup. Um, and then he kind of, at least for me, was like the guy that kind of set the standard. Um, but, you know, I didn't realize how actually, you know, crazy good he was going to turn out to be, you know, Hall of Fame type. But because that standard was always like, OK, why can't I be this good? Like, you know, <laughs> it was like this guy's just abnormally strong and quick, you know, so. Uh, I, I think there's just like a high standard there for, for our guys. And just like we didn't take the easy way out for anything, like we wanted to do things the right way. We challenged ourselves to, you know, be more athletic and run faster rather than, you know, take a cheap step or like yeah. another step that would make it easier or something. We wanted to like make make ourselves more athletic. It's crazy you say that about Zach because I went to the same high school as Zach. And I also I was there at the same time as his brother, Nick. And I remember yeah. growing up, I remember my brother would run behind him. He was a running back for Zach his first couple of years. And I asked him, did you guys actually think Zach was that good? He's like, no, I mean, I thought he might go to college, but I don't think he'd be this good in the NFL. So that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Kind of similar. So, yeah, exactly. Like I knew he was really good, but I I never like it makes sense to me now, like because I knew how good he was at left tackle yeah. and taking a guy like that and putting him at guard. I knew it was going to be a piece of cake for him, like at least footwork wise. And he was already a tough physical guy. Like that was his kind of mantra. So, um, you know, him doing as well as he did in the league definitely gave me confidence knowing like I was doing the right things. Like, Oh yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. So then I know everyone who was there. So whether it be the Martins there, I know they played basketball in high school. You played basketball in high school. Big Q played basketball in high school. I feel like a lot more guys on the line played basketball high school. How intense were those pickup sessions? Yo, they definitely got intense, you know. We definitely got after it. I think McGlinchey was the one who really like, uh, like internalized he was a hooper, you know. I, I I'm the same way. I, I, I'll, you know, go around telling everyone I was a hooper, you know. I'll still hoop, but uh, we would have great sessions, and everyone could hoop. McGlinchey, uh, Q, Hunter, Bivens, you know, there was other guys that weren't necessarily starting, but they were all pretty, pretty good athletes, you know. So. What were we? Were you a point? Were you a forward? Yeah, yeah. I was a forward. I guess when it was the O line games, I was like a, a shooting guard slash forward. But <laughs> that's, that's what I was wondering. Yeah. Then who played point? Who was the who was the point guard in the lineman? We sessions? always had some, uh, there is not enough linemen, so there's always you know some wide receivers or quarterbacks or something there. So uh, okay, okay. It was so always a mix between the guys. But if you weren't a lineman, you're going to be point guard. Pretty much is how it works. Pretty much. I mean, there's only linemen, definitely. <laughs> so then in school, were you uh? When you when you played in high school and then now like for your game are do you, are you a shooter you pound people in the post? I was like a I mean I, I pretty much played like mid range and then I, I was a postman too like I had really good footwork in the post. Yeah. But I you know me and uh like me and one of the other teammates one of my friends good long term friends named Ben he was another big man and me and him had like a high low game it was just like unbeatable like. <sighs> our passing and our movement just in the, in the box. Um, you know, we would get the ball to each other so fast and at different angles and always be moving. And that was just kind of like our, our zone. Gotcha. I mean, that made chemistry makes a big difference. I mean, look at team USA right now. They can't win a fucking game, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> so then you were drafted and, uh, you were drafted in the first round by a great organization, the Ravens. Uh, did you like stay up all when you first, Sign the contract. Did you stay up all night waiting for that first deposit to go into your bank account? Not really. I didn't really, really look at it, honestly. <laughs> really? I try I try not to even look at it. Yeah. I think it's a trap. <laughs> Makes sense. I see I, I have a certain fair, amount of money. So. I'm like, shit, I'm rich, but like I have nothing compared to what you guys have. I don't even think I have like really looked I mean, I've I honestly talked about it like with my you know, financial advisor and things like that. But um yeah. Yeah, when you definitely when you see the numbers that you have in there, you're like, okay, well, I can afford this. Spending. Yeah, you have a little spending <laughs> I can money. Afford that. <laughs> but that's the... why I say it's better off not looking at it. <laughs> what's the biggest purchase? Like, what's the one? What was the one that you like hurt the most? Or you're like, I kind of have want to so bad because you had to do uh, at least my one rookie of those. year. My rookie year, I uh, I leased. I didn't buy a BMW X6M. Ooh. And it was an expensive lease. It was like still like seventy five thousand dollars, like just to lease it. Jesus. But I'm I'm very happy I leased it because, you know, that was like my dream car growing up. But 
it didn't uh you know it didn't handle like a like a sports car normally would because it was so heavy you know but it was it was marketed like a sports car that you're supposed to drive it like a sports car but it didn't really you couldn't really turn it like one so <laughs> yeah i'm glad i leased it but i'm um, you know i definitely could have done without that but yeah what do you what do you drive now a uh, tesla oh do you have the tesla truck no no i don't have the no. truck i have the suv <laughs> okay good move good move good move yeah so going to your career you started you started from day one like you were the starter what was the mo what was your welcome to the league moment like when you were playing in the nfl or maybe was it in training camp yeah i think welcome to the league moment is just because i was going against like terrell suggs every day my yeah. first year so that was kind of my welcome to the league moment just going against him in camp and like you know they're different. It's they're different. Uh, grown men in the in the NFL compared to college. You know, there's maybe one or two guys you can pull out and be like, okay, those guys are grown men. But you know, in the NFL, it's like every team's got grown men at every position. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. What What about the moment you realize you belonged? Like, what was the moment you're like, dude, I'm gonna kick ass? Um. You know, I definitely you know. Along the along lines through my rookie year, I was definitely, you know, not playing at the the level I was years later, but I definitely was like, I know I can play in the league. Like, I know I can, you know, excel, you know, as long as I keep getting better. Um, So I would say, you know, so at some point through the season, you know, there's definitely some point of like comfortability where I was confident in, you know, my, my skills and what I was doing on the field. Makes sense. Makes sense. So like... This is going to sound really weird, but when you're a lineman, is it almost harder to block for a guy like Lamar because he's so mobile? Because like, I feel like when you're blocking for a pocket guy, you know he's going to be right there, but for Lamar, if a play doesn't develop, I feel like you don't know which way he's going to go. Does it make it kind of harder sometimes, even though I'm feeling I mean, most people think it's, it's a, easier? It's a it's a give and take, and you know I'd rather take Lamar than you know someone who's going to be at the same spot every time, you know, because... Yeah. Um, if 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 someone's in the same spot that the defense end doesn't really have to like look they just have to rush to a point or rush to a spot and ju just they can pretty much do it blind you know with Lamar you have they have to like rush and pay attention <laughs> you know they have to really be in tune of what's going on while they're trying to do a move or whatever the case so i i it's definitely you know uh, a lot i like it a lot better just having him and just knowing you know he's one of, he's not one of those guys who's just going to move just cuz he's going to move and he's going to he's going to make it worth it so he does it with a purpose he doesn't just move to move like he'll stay in the exactly. pocket if he yeah. wants to stay in the pocket yeah. yeah if he's moving i'm usually not mad at him cuz i know he's moving for a reason <laughs> whenever uh i mean you've you've barely allowed any sacks in the league but when you ever allow a sack do you kind of go back to him like dude i'm sorry man that was my fault <laughs> uh not in the middle yeah actually i do i do actually actually in the middle of the game i would say that like right maybe not uh yeah maybe after i pick him up i'll probably say man i'm sorry <laughs> like <laughs> or then on the sideline and i'll probably say it again and then you know because i just ex don't expect that from myself because i mean it never happens like it's only happened six and a half times your entire career like that's crazy <laughs> Yeah, I just, I, I just, that's just like the expectation I've always, not always, but I've built to have for myself. Yeah. And so this past year was really weird. Uh, you, I mean, the whole COVID season and I know like everything was different for you. Like what was the weirdest thing about like, let's say like the virtual workouts in the off season. Like what was the weirdest thing about all that? I mean, for me, it wasn't really that weird. Cause I was kind of in town already kind of just lifting and using the facilities and whatnot. So yeah um because i was rehabbing as well just through like other injuries so it was it wasn't you know the off season was actually really nice having you know guys being able to stay home longer and do the things that they wanted to do and um yeah i think the biggest the weirdest part was just the games having no fans that was, that was the next question i was gonna be like what was the weirdest thing about it in general is it's like having no fans is it weird like when you're on an away game you just like kind of do whatever you want it's just like like, did you guys have to change certain things to make it harder? Or like, what did you guys do? Like, did you do anything specifically differently because of COVID? No, usually, uh, usually on away games, like you'll have to go silent count. Yeah. Because it's so loud. But you know, last year, very few times that did that actually have to happen. And you know, that's definitely a advantage to the away team because you don't have to deal with that now. 
I'm not, and I wasn't really sure. I didn't look back at your old games. Did you guys have a game where you actually played with fans? And like, was it weird? Like when you guys uh, played with a bigger crowd? Like I got first game hurt back? like week six. So oh, yeah. they, they, I think they did like towards later the season, like towards the end of the season. They definitely had some fans there, but you know, yeah, I, I wasn't there. <laughs> I forgot. That's that was my next question. I, that was a stupid ass question before that. It was like October thirtieth. You signed the biggest contract, making you the big, most paid lineman in the NFL. And then two days later, you just destroy your ankle and you're out for a season, man. Like, yeah. At part, at what point did you realize they're like, all right, at least I got paid. Like, I got the money, so like that was secured. Like timing wise, you couldn't ask for like that. That happened, but like in terms of timing, at least you got it. <laughs> you got the right, back. I was just. Right, I was just trying to be positive about the whole situation, and I was just kind of, you know, it sucks that it happened, but I was still feeling blessed that, you know, I was financially secured, and, you know, that happened 48 hours before this happened, you know, so I was just trying to focus on how blessed I was because of that. That's all you really can do in a situation like that. That's just got to be so devastating. Yep. <laughs> Especially last season. Uh, but right. now, and this also this past year, you guys are, you guys have lost a pretty key part of your locker and one of your boys, Mark Ingram, like, how are you guys going to adjust without him? I know it's going to be hard. I, I, I love, I love Mark. And we were just texting the other day cause really me and him. Yeah. Me and him became like really close, really fast. You know, uh, we're just like brothers, really. We are just always like fighting, whatever, <laughs> like really <laughs> like just joking with each other making jokes all the time you know we come hang out at each other's houses you know whatever play video games just chop it up you know so definitely gonna miss him and his leadership and his energy you know that's that stuff is contagious you know so yeah that was a big thing so i know like i feel like i bet a bunch of people in the locker room could say that offense and defense could say the same thing about mark just like he's right. our boy. there's not one person that disliked mark in the locker room <laughs> oh i bet dude he's the man and then mm -hmm. uh other than that so like before this sec get into like the segment of like quick questions, just kind of rapid fire kind of shit, whatever. Uh, how do you become, you're so gentle, you're quiet. You're just like this really nice guy. How do you flip the switch to go into like the meanest motherfucker on the field? Just focus, you know, and it's really just like, just like you said, there's, there's really that flip mental uh, switch, you know, and that, you know, you just kind of, in preparation as well like focus and preparation and i feel like if i have those things i don't need to you know i don't need to build up any like false energy you know i kind of i kind of rely on my preparation and what i've done and uh the energy is there it's just kind of honed in you know i kind of try to focus that energy on my technique and really not try to like you know over overdo anything else and try to try to really keep it like as straightforward as that yeah and so this is gonna be a really weird question so i remember back when i played i would always have people like growl or say some weird shit when they were lined up across from me are there guys are there guys that'll do that still in the nfl where they like growl or they'll say some weird shit and you're like dude yeah, what the fuck? Not, not that much growling i mean yeah i definitely i definitely was that guy too you know I really <laughs> yeah i was the. i mean i was definitely the guy that like was getting super hyped up like you know uh high school but this is definitely a time where i was definitely <laughs> the guy that was getting like everyone juiced up before the game you know and i just like over time i just felt like it wasn't sustainable at least for someone who was playing as much as i was and trying to play as as like as high tempo and as high yeah. energy as i wanted to play for a whole game i couldn't just you know growl at people in between <laughs> that you know so i decided to focus everything on playing and doing everything to play but there's definitely people out there that are, like that'll say weird stuff, mostly defense alignment, because, you know, they'll have like four, six play stretches and then they could take a breather. Yeah. And then, you know, their backup can come in, whatever, and they can catch their breath from their growling or whatever. For and talking come shit. Back in, you know. <laughs> come back For me, I it. don't have that luxury. No. So. Got to play I'm, every I'm, play. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, if someone's like, there's not really that much uh, shit talking that goes on the league, honestly. I mean. Not a not a whole lot, but there is definitely there. But, what, you know, what, I'm, what's not, like... I'm not afraid to talk. If, if they want to talk, I'll talk. But you know, I'm not I'm not gonna sit there and just shit talk. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna play the game. <laughs> what's the weirdest thing someone's ever said? Like you're 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 sitting you're getting, you're in your stance. What's the weirdest thing? That has to be the most disrespectful, but like maybe the weirdest thing you ever heard. <laughs> I don't really even know that. I don't know if I can answer that. I don't think I've heard. You know, 
only the weirdest thing I've heard is from Brandon Williams, like at practice, or from no, let me I'll take that back. Terrell Suggs, <laughs> Terrell Suggs will say, you know, effort right in the p word. <laughs> I don't know if I could cuss on this. So I was like, no, you can say so, you can do whatever you want. Like, he was like, fuck a right in the pussy. Like he'll say that. Like while we're while we're like everyone's sitting still. Like, and the quarterback's like, set, fuck a ride in the pussy. Like, that's all she'll just say that shit right before the snap. <laughs> so he'll just do that stuff, like, right before the snap. Like, say something like that. You know, hey, it gets you no ready for the game because you're hearing everyone, all that. Everyone, and everyone hearing hearing all hears it too because right before there is, it's quiet. Like, it's really quiet. So he says it right when it gets really quiet. <laughs> and to, th- to be fair, though, it's, it gets you ready for the game. Like, you're hearing that. Like, if you listen to the stands, there's people saying some crazy shit up there. Oh yeah, so, but you don't hear you don't, you don't hear, hear it's just like is, it's just yeah. like a muffled, but like yeah, dude, there, there's some weird shit. So let's kind of oh, get in some yeah. let's get let's get in some weirdly really quick questions. Give as long answers, short answers as you want. But these are just like dumb questions I think of when I watch the NFL and just things like that. First mm-hmm. one is, what's your favorite cliche answer? <sighs> like, what's the one I hate to see the most? Yeah. <laughs> uh. Uh. Um. I think my the one I hate the most is he's just got to get stronger. <laughs> well, I hate that. <laughs> like when I hate when players say that coaches, I mean players, coaches, media, yeah, the guy's just got to get stronger, you know, or he's just got to get better. Like, he's got to go watch. Got I got to go watch the tape real quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just like yeah, he's just got to get better, like without any, you know, steps and you know, and, no you substance. Know, the thing with the getting stronger is like okay, like anyone can get strong. It's not. Yeah. Like, you know. <laughs> It'll help, but you know it's not gonna do everything. Gonna, you gotta it's not have... gonna make the guy a better player. No, you know? <laughs> so I don't think uh, I don't think Lamar has to go out there and bench three hundred fifteen pounds to get better. I, I think there's right, like, right. other stuff he's got to do. Um, 100%. Oh yeah, what's what's your go to answer then in a media source? Like if you don't hear the question, like what's your go to answer? <laughs> if I don't hear the question, I usually don't answer. I'll be like, "Can you say that again?" But <laughs> um. I'll just be like, oh, yeah, right. Or you say like that. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, what's it like being over 300 pounds? Uh, you know, it's 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 not bad, honestly. I mean, the worst part is like the like my knees. like, But that's really from me playing basketball and football like my whole life. So I'm, a, I'm naturally going to be like a big guy rather even if I wasn't playing football because I'm, I'm like half Polynesian. So like. A lot of the people in my family are already kind of like big so um I, I already have like big bones or whatever but yeah it's not it's not bad honestly it's not it's not too bad as long as you know you can keep that percentage that body fat percentage lean percentage right you know your life won't be too bad but finding things that fit you obviously sucks dude that's gotta you know, be so fucking hard yeah especially like designer stuff like if you want to wear something nice you know it's their 2x runs like a large so yeah it's gotta be such a pain, like getting get like suits fitted and all that kind of stuff. Like when you yeah, travel. yeah, exactly. Oh, it's just man. it's a lot. Well, that's gotta be everything brutal. has to be custom. Like yeah, yeah <laughs> are you gonna hold the weight after you? Uh, this is not. Is it, are you gonna hold the weight after? Or are you gonna try to lose it? Nah, weight? definitely, definitely gonna lose lose at least like twenty pounds for sure. Okay, I'm talking about after your career's over. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's just awesome. okay, okay. Uh, what's yeah. your favorite stadium to play in then? That is not in Baltimore. Favorite stadium playing that's not in Baltimore? Uh, you know, I really don't like any of the stadiums. Like, I don't, I'm not, I don't go to the stadium and be like, oh, I can't wait to play in here. Like, well, there's got to be a crowd. You got to love just pissing off. Oh, I mean, I love pissing. I don't know why. I love pissing off the Steelers fans for sure. Like, <laughs> Steelers, I think, and then Chiefs. I think I love playing i don't know why but i just love you know that atmosphere at the chief stadium like i love that love the energy yeah it's so loud there was that is that the loudest stadium let's uh, let's let's put baltimore aside is that the, is the are the chiefs the loudest stadium you've been in or like what's the loudest environment you've been into whether it be college or the nfl yeah chiefs get pretty they get pretty loud um I feel like the big house had to be pretty loud when you were playing at Mich- Notre Dame. Oh, Michigan? Yeah, Michigan was probably the loudest I've ever, like, in one instance, loudness I've ever had in my life. Like, I couldn't hear the guy next to me. That's nuts. So at the like- very – because we played there my 
my first year starting and it was their last or last or first night game there in like 30 years or something it was like and it was full capacity over like 120,000 people were there and we it was our first drive and we were backed up on like their our own like two yard line first drive and it is they're so loud it it was crazy i really couldn't i couldn't hear myself like the vibrations from my mouth i could like feel them wither away from the vibrations from the crowd just like overtaking them <laughs> like that's crazy it was crazy it was that is crazy no is it is that do you ever like can you like feel i know sometimes stadiums will shake do you ever feel the shake that was a time i did feel it really like, i don't feel it anymore you know i'm i'm really focused now like i i can kind of ignore it it's kind of like white noise to me now but at that at that time, you know, my career where I wasn't used to it, yeah, I could really feel the vibrational shake. That's so crazy because I always hear people talk about that. I'm like, there's no way the players actually feel that, but you guys yeah. actually do. That's yeah. okay. Next one. Uh, what's the pregame music? Are you rap, EDM, electronic rock, country? I like I like no more rap. Okay. Uh, I get some some good. There's some good smooth uh like uh house music that I'll listen to. You know, some some like smooth EDM, some vibes, uh, sometimes some classical, you classical know, some classical in there. Yeah, kind of mellow like out a little bit. A Who's got the yeah. aux cord in the in the locker room usually? Was it Ingram? Uh, no, I don't. For a while there, we didn't do an aux cord because there's so many guys that like didn't want like other music playing, you know, because <laughs> whatever the case might be. But yeah, I think uh. Uh, Brandon Williams usually has the aux cord. All that's, right, that's all right. Fair. Is it worth switching your visor from super dark to clear in between uh, warm ups in the game? Uh, I don't know. I've never had to do that. So I swear I saw a picture of you out there with the dark visor. Yeah, that's what I wear the tinted visor. Can you wear it in the game? Yeah. How did you I get like that? A prescription. You have to need. You need like a prescription from like the eye doctor. Is it a real prescription, or do you do it just to look hard as fuck? Oh no, you gotta get it from him. Like the league is like super strict on it now. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I was gonna say because the Ravens uniforms with those dark visors, those are so hard. Yeah, they wouldn't even let me get the darkest one. So. Oh my god. It's just like a. That's probably you probably saw a pic of it. Maybe I, yeah, like I did. Halfway clear or something. Was my next question was like how to fuck to market like the dark one. And yeah, I asked him those. too. I asked him that, <laughs> and you know, he said he has his way. So. <laughs> i'm not lying though it's like that it's like you guys and the raiders like those uniforms with the dark visors i don't think there's anything more like like intimidating or badass looking in the yeah league. yeah the visors we're getting different colors this year too so it should be are cool. they allowing it yeah they're allowing it so it should be cool this year Ooh, anything special planned for you i'm not sure yet i i've yet to pick so we'll see we I'm got definitely gonna definitely gonna pick something though i it think we'll be just plain I think it's just go up dark. Just keep it dark and intimidating. Right, right. Like a Terminator. All right. Yeah, definitely uh, it would be like a Terminator for sure. You already, I think you already answered. The first thing you bought with your first paycheck was the car. Yeah. It was the car. Yeah. All that right. Was like my first first big purchase. Big video game. You're a big video game guy. What's your top three yep. games right now? You know, top three games: Apex, Apex, and Apex. That's Bro, come on! You gotta say Warzone. That's all I play. Uh, Warzone is. I cannot get on the Warzone train. I used to play Call of Duty. That used to be my game. You know, I used to play that all the time. Um, I played a little Destiny. I played some Overwatch. Those are good games. PUBG. You know, FIFA. Those are good games. I've just been addicted to Apex lately. I was, I that's what I've noticed on your feed. You're very you're very into Apex right now. I'm just addicted to the game. I don't know why. <laughs> I love it. Is that what you is that, uh, what the would skill you say? The ceiling is so high, I feel like. Yeah, I would say so. How much how often do you play well how often would you say you play video games like time wise? I don't know, maybe like four hours a day. That's all right. That's what we all do. Everyone our yeah. generation growing up, we all play video games. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think just I think it's very therapeutic, honestly. I think it is. Oh, I do too. Like, I think it really helps, especially, like, our generation, where I feel like it helped a lot of people, like, just get through shit. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I try to act like video games is, like, what increases, like, gun violence and all that. No, like, no, no it's, it's definitely the opposite. It's definitely the opposite. 
like you want like let's say you're pissed off or like all right i'm gonna go play like ufc4 and just beat the shit out of somebody like yeah and then you, you feel can, better yeah and then people were just like at least back when we were kids just like spam uh cyber bullying <laughs> people just like talking shit and that was a way for people to like vent out their own frustrations on everyone else you know so that was also their way of like getting out their frustrations. I <laughs> to remember be, those to days. be fair, though, people were going overboard on those like Call of Duty servers. The That's what I'm that saying. Those saying. Call of Duty servers, <laughs> for sure. But I never took anything like to heart. I, you know, I never. But I was a kid. You know, that was just that was just the norm back then to just like go overboard and just go crazy on the <laughs> Call of Duty lobbies, like. <laughs> I just remember it was just a contest of who could just you know who could be the most harder bold. who could be the yeah, most exactly bold. exactly <laughs> who could who could convince this little kid like that you're actually in contact with his mom like who can make so and so like just feel the worst <laughs> about themselves it right was, right it was just like it was like Reddit and Twitter and all that before they really even existed and it was just right yeah. it was just filth everywhere <laughs> yeah I will say after no character built a lot of character oh it helps build really uh it helps build it helps you a lot to take shit when you get older and you yeah, start giving exactly. people shit it helps build that and so last yeah. question too is when is the podcast with marlon humphrey coming out oh that's coming out soon very soon so right now i'm waiting on marlon to get back from his little vacay because you know he likes to travel the world so which is all good i i respect it so he, the podcast setup is in his house and we'll be starting that you know in the next couple of days weeks here is it gonna be is, are you guys going through the season or is it gonna be like a yearly thing or like what, what are you yeah we're gonna we're gonna do it through the season through the season that's the plan yeah and then take a break during off season and do... yeah during off season it'll be like a seasonal thing like that's really cool season. Yeah, yeah that'll be really cool all right so you killed all the questions it was awesome uh promotional hour we just promoted the podcast promote your twitch channel yeah. social media yeah, twitch. all you follow man. me on twitch waguru i'll be on there sometimes <laughs> streaming apex <laughs> you know that's all i play so that's all we got all right follow him on social that's media that's follow him on twitch watch him on twitch watch out for the podcast coming out soon for that for me for stanley we're out peace